Okay, this is printer. Good. This is the printer. <laughs> did, they, did they get that? Yes. <laughs> and this is Katie, and this is the review. Yeah. The cartridge, and so that's why we filled that up. You have to finish putting the cartridge together. Right. Okay. Now you just open it up. Help this work. Okay, so once that's done, we click on the panner and usually we just put the same panner on it on there. So now is because the vacuum won't work, we tape it down so that it will stay down when it's printing. <laughs> Oh my god, they can love you. Yeah, you can probably stop it now. We have to stop at like a... Hi, I'm Teddy. I'm in the document restoration lab. And I work on um, trying to uncover uh, texts that have been written over. Most of them are really old. And um, I do it through using... Uh, well, I don't use it, but... Uh, we did, um, you can use different lights or, uh, there's different ways to use it with, uh, the variance of the colors in it. You can, um, change around by doing that and you can uncover what's written underneath and then, um, right now I'm working on something that was made by Archimedes, but it was rewritten over, um, during the Crusades. So, and a lot of it has to do with math and stuff that's needs to be uncovered because no one really knows about it. And right here I'm using the Envy program and you can see that it's not really clear what's written over but you can um, change it. So um, now it's much clearer. You can see um, different letters and people are able to read it much more easily now that it's the uh, light um, of the camera has been changed but it's still the exact same image. Yeah. Alright, so this is the Toby room, and the Toby is this thing right here. This is an eye tracker, which is one of the eye trackers that we work with. It's a remote binocular eye tracker, which means it doesn't have to be attached to you, and it tracks both your eyes instead of just one. So what we do in here is a lot of studies to see what people look at when they're looking at an image. Like the thing that I'm working on right now is uh, part of an NSF grant about learning how to do geology in on a field trip. So what we're doing is we're taking pictures from this like 10 day long field trip in California and we're putting them up here and seeing how, what people look at when they're looking for like geographical things that happen to cause these rock formations. I'm not a geologist so I don't really understand what happened to cause them. but. Um, so what we do is we have this software, er, software and this thing to see what they're looking at and you know how they look at it, what order they look at it, and the gaze plot which shows us, you know, it's just a, like a scatter plot of where everyone looks. And uh, yeah, so we're trying to see the difference between experts and novices in the field of geology. and. Um, Hi, I'm Katie. I work in the remote sensing lab. She's Katie, too. She's, she didn't work in here. Um, right now, I'm just working on some 3D imaging, trying to figure out how to take data points off of a lake. And I created this lakeshore polygon thing. Very fun. This is the lake that we're using right now. Mine is converting this shore so it'll actually show this with all the points on it. And then I can add it to the 3D image, which is fun. And I can open it. Back. Yay! 3D image. 
How fun. Let me do that from Lane said stuff. That's fun too. <laughs> Hi, I'm Chris Fallon. And I'm Sean O'Neill. And this is the Insight Lab. We do astronomical imaging. Um, I'm working on jet and disk interactions of UGC FR1 galaxies. And I'm working on the optical spectrum of active galactic nuclei. So I'm looking at the sources in there. And here in the Insight Lab, we use IDL, which is a programming language, in which we can process data and make plots and graphs. So um, what I'm doing is I have this bunch of data right here. That's a bunch of numbers, a <laughs> lot of numbers. And I have about 50 of those files. So I had to convert them. And then I make, using IDL program, this program that I have right here that Paul helped me with. So this helps convert the data in, and it manipulates it, does some multiplying, division and stuff. And then it graphs it for me. It's pretty little graphs that I made right here. And now what I'm working on is getting those spikes, the really big ones, and so I just get the background. So that's what I'm working on. Okay, well, I am using IDL as well, and I am writing programs to make different plots. I'm not going to get into the details, but basically I have a bunch of data of a sample of 21 galaxies, and I am doing different things with them to investigate how the accretion disk and the radio jets interact. And that's about it. There's a uh, few other interns that don't really work up here, um, so you'll see them later. Insight Lab rules. Hi, I'm Liz Henderson. I'm working in the Insight Lab in the Imaging Science Building, and I'm running a program that works for Double Double Galaxies, um, like this one. Um, my name is Ashley. I'm with Image and Science. I'm in the astronomy field. And I was chosen to work on a project including the cube. And you have to come up with something to do. And we decided to do global warming and the evolution of three animals. Dolphins, crows, and elephants. And these are some of the pictures that we chose to put on the cube. It shows pollution in the air being released by factories. This is the greenhouse effect and how some of the sun rays bounce off um, Earth and are reflected in that. This is another picture, how to conserve energy, prevent global warming. That's some more pollution. Dead crops because of drought. Another global warming. How they, the theory of how the world will be flooded when all the polar ice caps melt. The world. And how um, this boulder glaze. My name is uh, Sean Welch. I'm an intern at the RIT Imaging Science Center. And this is the ultrasound lab even though in this lab I'm working on imaging things. Uh, right now I'm writing a program that's going to take this pretty little lady and make her the same size as that lady. So even though they look the same, they need to be the exact same size of pixels so that um, a company can lay them on top of each other and figure out what's happened to these photos because they're from like over a hundred years ago. So it's pretty cool. Get to program computers. Hi, my name is Ryan Carney, and I'm working in the optics lab. And basically what I'm working on is called the vortex lens. And instead of a lens being flat, we're working on having one have different stops around in a helical pattern so that it can sort of twist light. And this could be useful in a variety of things, including astronomy, uh, microscopy. It's, it can do a lot of different things, and we're trying to make one using both imaging science and we're working over in the microelectronic engineering lab.